In recent years, we have gotten quite used to how all these Chinese-made LED lights of varying shapes and sizes tend to have a power rating that is a little optimistic. This, for example, is an LED floodlight. This is supposed to be 50 watts, but as I shall demonstrate, it isn't. Now, I'm going to aim this away from the camera to hopefully avoid excessive flicker. If I plug this in, we can see, yeah, that is not 50 watts. That is only about 40 watts. So that is an LED light, but this uh, overly generous power rating has not been a thing only since the advent of LED lights. Yesterday I picked up some old video and photography lights, mostly for the stands, but they also came with two of these light bulbs. Now, this is really, I guess at this point you can say, a blast from the past, these tornado-type compact fluorescence, and this one is absolutely massive. Now, it does have an E27 base, and for comparison, here is a regular light bulb, also with an E27 base. Quite a difference. Now, this is rated a whole 85 watts, 230 volts, 5500K, it's cold white, and it does actually say photographic lamp on the base. Now, there might actually be some truth to that. Apparently, these photographic compact fluorescents were made with a somewhat better, more sophisticated phosphorus inside of the tube to get a somewhat better color rendering index, better color reproduction. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but the one thing that I do know is that uh, there is absolutely no truth to this 85 watt rating. Now, if I bring in the screw adapter, here it is. Now, should we test the old light? Yes, I think we should. So let's uh, screw in this nice traditional... Oh yes, that's nice. And 42 watts, as you can see. And this is, I think... Yep, this is a 40 watt incandescent light. So, yep, this one actually consumes more power than what it was rated for. But anyway, let's uh, screw in this one and see just how many of the rated 85 watts we actually get. This is bright. This is very bright. Surprisingly, it's not that flickery. But yeah, as you can see, 44, well, 45, let's see. Yeah, there you go. 45 watts. So that is only about half of what this light is supposed to put out. Now, if we wait for a little bit, of course, uh, these lights all have to heat up. And now, <laughs> if I think back to the days when I was using compact fluorescence, uh, the fact that they have to heat up actually uh, led to a behavior on my side that was not at all energy saving. When I left a room, I just tended to leave the light on just so that when I returned to the room, I didn't have to wait for the compact fluorescent to light up again. Now, if we check once again on our power rating, it's now at 52 watts, and this was sort of the aim of telling this little story. Let's uh, see how the power input, power consumption behaves as this heats up. But I do think this uh, by now is pretty well heated up. Yeah, this, this thing is hot. <laughs> 
Do I, uh, yes, I do have my, uh, my, uh, thermometer. Let's see. Now, I don't know if the light is messing with the infrared reading of this meter, but, uh, that is, uh, 138 degrees Fahrenheit, or 58 degrees Celsius, almost 59. And yeah, this, uh, well, I mean, you can still touch it, but it is quite warm. Now, the power consumption is still at about uh, 52 watts, so I don't think it's going to get any more than that. So uh, yeah, that is uh, the 85 watt compact fluorescent busted. Would be more accurate if they uh, just swapped those numbers around, made it a 58 watt. Maybe that was the original plan until someone came along and swapped the numbers to uh, make his product look better. So that's just something to think about. Not only the LEDs are overly generously rated, that was also already a thing in the days of compact fluorescence. Thank you for watching.